meeting new people. The hooker. And a fine one you are on Tackling a new career. What do I do for privacy? Go home at night. Then meet Assistant D.A. Harrigan. I'm not going to tell you where we were or what we were doing when I had to excuse myself and go to an autopsy. Mary and Holy Square, premiering December 11th. Evening in America. When the work's all done, that's when people turn to us. The CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. We keep America on top of the world. This is CBS. Coming up next on News Center 8, thousands of shivering homeless being swept off the streets of New York City tonight. And we'll see how Cleveland Street people are handling the first deep freeze of winter. And we have an exclusive I-Team probe into an alleged scheme for fixing traffic tickets in Parma. And a young cancer patient sees her Christmas wish of a lifetime come true tonight. In sports, there's good news for the Browns, but it's bad for the tribe. If it feels cold here, consider Mount Washington, New Hampshire. The temperature is 6 below zero. The wind is blowing at 99 miles an hour. Those stories and much more next on U Center 8. I have this friend who needles me about how much I spend on shoes. I got a hundred pair, maybe more. How do I afford it? Shop Tom McCann. Tell her? I don't think so. Joey and me are going away with Mom and Dad. We packed all by ourselves. Show them, Joey. Real good, Joey. I just love shoes. Going to the shoe store, trying on pair after pair. You know, if it weren't for Tom McCann, I'd go barefoot. Tom McCann, a shoe store for people who love shoes and for those who don't. Burger King now begins a nationwide search for Herb, the one man who's never tasted a Burger King burger. Herb was never what you'd call normal. Herb has never learned to love flame broiling instead of frying. Herb was unusual. Herb was different. Herb has never enjoyed this sizzling whopper. Put yourself together. Herb, wherever you are, start asking yourself, aren't you hungry for Burger King, Herb? Polo isn't just a game. It's a tradition, a way of life. One that is captured by Ralph Lauren in his clothing and in Polo. Ralph Lauren's sporting scent for men. Travel in the sporting manner with Polo Travel Partners. This handsome saddlebag and matching garment bag, only $21.50, with any Polo fragrance purchase of $16 or more. Inside, you'll find a sample of Polo Cologne. The perfect gift from May Company and O'Neill's. Divorce Court, weekdays at 4.30 on TV8. Now, Tim Taylor, Denise DeCenzo, Casey Coleman on sports, and Dick Goddard with weather. This is News Center 8. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Here's what's happening. New York City police are sweeping the streets tonight, rounding up the city's homeless as a bitter winter chill hits the Big Apple. Officials say they've taken in more homeless this week than at any time since the Great Depression. In some cases, the street people were forcibly taken to a shelter or hospital so they wouldn't freeze to death in the bitter nighttime temperatures. It's estimated up to 8,000 bagged people are in emergency shelters tonight. As Clevelanders brave the bitter cold here, some of the city's emergency shelters say they've really been surprised by the small numbers of people looking for a warm place to spend the night. As New Center 8's Martin Savage is standing by live to report, those who deal with Cleveland's homeless say, don't let that fool you. Marty? Well, Tim and Denise, survival on the street is a day-to-day -day or a night-to-night -night thing. So is the job of sometimes trying to put a life-saving roof over the heads of the city's homeless. Last night, some shelters were full, while others stood half-empty. We're not too well prepared. Why not? Shortage in money. On any given winter night, as many as 5,000 homeless people may wander Cleveland streets. Bob Zook of the Cleveland Chapter of Volunteers of America has seen and taken care of many of them. He says it's difficult to guess what sort of winter it will be for the homeless. At this point, we don't know. We had one spell of cold weather, but that doesn't mean that we're free of having the homeless come and need assistance. As high winds and bitter cold blasted the city Monday night, only 28 people came to the VOA shelter off West 25th Street, where there is room for 200 or more. But that doesn't mean the need is there or that one night soon, every bed may be taken. You know, taking care of a person, uh, giving them a meal and giving them a bed, that isn't the end. If, if, if you're going to help the person, you've got to go a little further. And to go a little further, you've got to have the funds to do it with. 
The VOA so far this year has served 73,000 meals to the area's needy and puts up hundreds of people each year for shelter. And each year it ends up about 75,000 in the red. For emergency shelters all around, it is money and not beds in critical supply. But officials say there are no easy answers and unfortunately, no cheap ones either. There is some good news to report concerning the situation of Cleveland's homeless. That is, some shelters, some shelters, say they are seeing decreasing numbers of people coming to their door ever since the record year of 1983. Also today, Governor Celeste handed over $2.4 million to go to the emergency shelters in the state. The bad news is, when you take that money and divide it amongst all those shelters, for them it will merely be a drop in the bucket. Tim and Denise. Thanks, Marty. Can you buy your way out of a traffic ticket in Parma Muni Court? That is the question investigators are asking tonight in their probe of the Parma Clerk of Court's office. IT reporter Carl Monday, who's been looking into allegations of wrongdoing in the Parma court system, says the county prosecutor wants to know if some traffic violators with the right connections are beating the legal system. More than 12,000 traffic tickets will be issued in Parma this year, but you won't find most of the tickets on file at the Parma Muni Court. At the request of the county prosecutor, sheriff's deputies today confiscated thousands of traffic tickets and criminal files for 1985. But what prosecutors may really be looking for are tickets that don't appear on the Parma Muni Court files. Speculation is the investigation involves cases that were mysteriously pulled from the files before they ever went to court. Sources say the investigation may also involve the disappearance of waiver money money sent by traffic violators who chose to plead guilty and pay the fine rather than appear in court. Do you consider this pretty serious? I mean, they don't come and uh, confiscate files for, for no good reason. It is not pleasant to have a, another authority uh, come in and, and do, do this kind of a thing. It is not, not pleasant. During a phone conversation, outgoing clerk of courts Walter Shipka told us a state audit turned up no irregularities in his office. When questioned in person about the investigation, Shipka got a little camera shy. Can you tell us why the prosecutor's office hey, is I'll looking at your office? Right Mr. Off Mr. Your Watch the camera. Keep going. Keep That's going. right. I'll throw it right can, at you. Can, can you tell us why the prosecutor's office is investigating your office? Why do they come and confiscate all those tickets today, Mr. Shipka? Would you please leave? Oh, no. Here, try it. Try it. Now, get out of my office. Sir, let me ask you. Sir, you have a responsibility to answer these questions. This is the second investigation into the Palmer Clerk's office in little more than a month. Newly elected Clerk of Courts, James Habrek, has been the target of a grand jury probe into the alleged misuse of the police computer system. Investigators believe the two cases are unrelated. Carl Monday, New Center 8 IT. It appears the White House expects NASA Administrator James Beggs to resign. Beggs was indicted yesterday on charges that he and three former colleagues at General Dynamics conspired to defraud the government of more than $3 million in overcharges for building a prototype of the Sergeant York anti-aircraft gun. President Reagan is quoted as saying he expects Beggs will do the right and proper thing. Cuyahoga County taxpayers are being taken for a ride as RTA squanders our tax dollars on what appears to be exorbitant costs for parts and repairs. In a month-long investigation, our fact finder Tom Meyer exposes wasteful spending practices at RTA's garages. This is one of 134 RTA garage doors. Repairs to doors like this are costly. RTA spent more than $76,000 last year alone. This is called a cam roller, just one of many parts that make a garage door work. We bought one for $22, but according to these records we checked, RTA spent $54 a piece, or more than twice what we paid. Somebody's definitely getting ripped off to the max. Nuts and bolts, they're on every garage door. We bought the nuts that RTA uses for three cents a piece at a local hardware store. RTA spent a dollar a piece for the same kind. The bolts cost us nine cents each. RTA paid a dollar each. Clearly, there is something amiss over there. Now, what is going on, I don't know. Overhead door of Greater Cleveland is RTA's maintenance contractor. They got the contract by promising a 25% discount on materials. Do they have to charge a discount for all parts or some parts? No, the bid package says all parts. And this indicates no discount for a door section worth over $775. Exactly right. Overhead door also got the contract by offering the lowest labor rate of $23 an hour. But are the number of work hours excessive? At the Woodhill garage, hinges and supports were installed in March. Invoices say the job took three men, eight and a half hours each. 
That's unreasonable and too high, says an industry expert. Well, I don't think it should take more than an hour and a half for the three men. If RTA was overbuilt, it would not be the first time. An inner office memo that we obtained shows that during the 1984 contract, overhead door of Greater Cleveland billed RTA $13 an hour more than was allowed. Once RTA was made aware of the overcharges, they had the company return the money. RTA then awarded the 85 contract to the same company. How many times does this have to be brought to the public's attention? Tom Meyer, New Center 8 Fact Finder. Tom contacted the owner of Overhead Door 15 days ago and has yet to get answers to his questions. Tomorrow at 6, part 2 of his investigation. And still to come on New Center 8, there may soon be two Kennedys in Congress. And then we'll tell you why some Cleveland residents are...